Good morning. My name is Heather Kistner, and I am privileged to be providing the opening words for today's service. A Place of Belonging and Caring by Kimberly Ann Carlson. It is not by chance that you arrived here today. You have been looking for something larger than yourself. Inside of you, there is a yearning, a calling, a hope for more, a desire for a place of belonging and caring. Through your struggles, someone nurtured you into being, instilling a belief in a shared purpose, a common yet precious resource. That belongs to all of us when we share. And so you begin seeking a beloved community. A people that does not put fences around love. A community that holds its arms open to possibilities of love. A heart home to nourish your soul and share your gifts. Welcome home and welcome to worship. Shalom, Hallelujah. Shalom, Hallelujah. Shalom, Shalom. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. To dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. This is our great covenant.
Hello. I have a story to share with you today that is adapted from one written by John J. Muth, which itself was an adaptation of an older story by Leo Tolstoy. And the story begins with a boy named Nikolai, who sometimes felt unsure about the right way to act. I wonder if any of us have ever been unsure at times how to make the best choices about how to be in the world. And he told his friends, I, I want to be a good person, but I don't always know the best way to do that. And he thought, you know, if I could only get the answers to three questions that I have, I think I would always know how to figure out what to do. And the three questions he had were, when is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? And what is the right thing to do? The boy thought for a long while, but he didn't know the answers to his questions. But finally he had an idea. He thought, oh, I know. I'm going to go ask Leo the turtle. He has lived a long, long time. Surely he will know the answers to the questions that I have. And so he began on a journey to go see Leo the turtle. And he got there, finally, high up in the mountains where the old turtle lived alone. But when he arrived, he saw that Leo was outside and was working very hard digging a garden. And it was slow going, for Leo was very old and couldn't work very fast. It was, it was digging was hard for him. But Nikolai said, oh, Leo, I, I've come to ask for your help. He said, Leo, I have three questions for you. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? And what is the right thing to do? And Leo listened carefully, but his only response was a smile. And after a while, Nikolai said, Oh, Leo, that looks like really hard work for you. Let me help you. So he took the shovel from Leo and began digging. And because it was easier for a young boy than it was for an old turtle, Nikolai kept on digging until all the rows in the garden were finished. But just as he finished, the wind blew mightily, and rain burst from darkened clouds. As they moved towards Leo's cottage for shelter, Nikolai suddenly heard a call for help. Running down the path from Leo's home, he ran towards the woods, and there he found a panda whose leg had been injured by a falling tree. And Nikolai managed to carry her back to Leo's home, where he took her in, made her comfortable in Leo's bed, and even made a splint for her leg with a piece of bamboo. And after a time, the panda woke up. Where am I, she asked, and where is my child? <sighs> Nikolai ran back out into the woods. In the rain, he looked and it was dark and it was hard to see, but he went back to where he had found the panda and after a while there he found the panda's child. The little panda was wet and scared and cold but alive. Nikolai gathered her up in his arms and carried her back to Leah's home, made her warm and dry, and laid her in her mother's arms. And Leo smiled when he saw what Nikolai had done. The next morning the sun was warm and birds sang and all seemed right with the world. And the panda's leg was healing nicely and she thanked Nikolai for helping her and mending her leg and saving her child. And Nikolai felt great peace within himself. He felt really good for having been helpful but also he felt disappointed because he had never gotten the answers to his questions. And so he asked Leo one more time. And Leo smiled at Nikolai and said, but your questions have been answered. They have, asked Nikolai. Yes, said Leo. Yesterday, when you stayed to help me in my garden, if you hadn't done that, you would never have been here to hear the panda's cries for help. And I certainly could not have helped her in the way that you did. And so yesterday in the garden, the right time to do things was right then. The most important one was me, and the right thing to do was to help me with my garden. Later, the right time to do something was when you heard the panda's cries for help, and the most important ones were the panda and her child, and the right thing to do was to save them and help them. So you see, Nikolai, there's only one important time, and that time is right now. The most important one is always the one you are with, and the right thing to do is always good for those who are by you. That is why we are here. In my last conversation with Alandria Williams, 
we spoke of a subject that we had returned to many times over the course of our relationship. And that was on the very stingy way our denomination has with using the word ministry. In the Pentecostal tradition, you're a minister when the Holy Spirit descends upon you and anoints you. And in the Unitarian Universalist tradition, you become a minister when you somehow manage to navigate what seems like an unending series of bureaucratic hurdles. Now there's a place in the world for trained ministry, and I am committed to ministry as a profession. But we need to free up that word ministry in a way that allows us to fan into flames the gift that is within every person. And in that spirit, I want you to listen to the words of Elandria Williams, words that we shared in a service a few months ago and share again today. I want you to listen carefully to these words because these words are ministry. Hi, my name is Alandria Williams, a longtime member of Tennessee Valley UU Church, and I'm happy to share a poem with you I wrote called, We Are Worthy. We are worthy, not because of what we produce, but because of who we are. We are divine bodies of light and darkness. You are not worthy because of what you offer, not because of what is in your mind, not for the support you give others, nor what you give at all. We are worthy and whole just because. In this great turning, in this great pandemic, in this radical readjustment and realignment, we are not disposable, we are needed. We are the very people that have withstood everything that has been thrown at us. And as Maya Angelou would say, still I rise. We arise from the pain. We rise from the grief. We rise from the limits people put on us and the limits we place on ourselves. We rise to be the children and the ancestors. We rise to be our true selves. Our true selves in relationship to our families and communities, recognizing our liberating and whole selves, honoring them and others as we strive for abundant communities, abundant lives, abundant relationships, and abundant values and cultural manifestations. You are worthiness personified. I, you, and we are worthy and desire a life where we are not fighting for our very existence. Imagine what we create if we were not always in the struggle. Imagine what we could envision if we were just allowed and just let be to go there. So tired of always having to resist, to fight, demanding, and pushing. To everyone that has the courage, the power, the ability to co-create what we want and need while rooting in what we cannot lose and who we are. You are the visionary. You are the hope. You are our ancestors' dreams. No, you might not ever end up on a list somewhere, but you are on a list in someone's heart and mind. And it's how you move in the world so people can see by example, you are the embodiment of what we need. The embodiment not of productivity, but the embodiment of radical love, care, and sanctuary. It's time, embodiment time. Embodiment, living one's values out loud. Let me every day live my values out loud. Let us every day live our values out loud. Embodying our values, not the productivity quotient, 
beyond productivity, past productivity, true embodiment, life. Today, congregation, family, community, we have concerns that must be raised and request that you will send prayers to the people listed. Barbara Taylor is recuperating from knee surgery and hoping to avoid a second surgery. Please send thoughts of healing to her. A few of our RE families are handling the anxiety of sick children and fearing that COVID has struck their households. Peace and comfort prayers and thoughts to alleviate the fear and panic of dealing with a pandemic while trying to keep a household safe and balanced. We're also sending prayers to Eunice Taylor's brother, Turner's brother, who is dealing with both pneumonia and COVID. And finally, as a church family, we have suffered a great loss. We are sorry to announce the passing of Alandria Williams. Alandria Williams, a child of our church who became a dynamic denominational leader, most recently as co-moderator of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Please surround Alandria's parents, Irvine and Elnora, and, her and the brother, Frederick, with love. Those of us who have taught, nurtured, and supported the stages of Elandra's growth in Sunday school, in youth group, and the empowerment of the spirit of a dedicated young adult have witnessed how Elandria blossomed as a grassroots community organizer Alandria served in congregational and denominational leadership positions and blessed us with courage and the convictions of social justice. Alandria had a gigantic heart that filled our world with love. Beyond passing seasons, there is no less magic now, no less mystery now, than when your comet first caught our eye. Crossing seasonal space, you captured from cold indifference sparks of hope, from weary stillness, light waves of resilience, from the dark, the light of distant stars that once burned bright, and also died. Looking where you passed will not reveal your eternal radiance, but look further. Out there, beyond seasonal change, deep in the galaxies of the human spirit, flares of passion have been released to shape justice and move the world toward peace. There's a truth beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a future burning brighter. There's a love to guide our There's a truth beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a future burning brighter. There's a love to guide our way. There's a truth.
Thank you for joining us today. My name is Claudia Presley and I'm the Director of Administration here at TVUUC. Today is a Share the Plate Offering Sunday. What that means is that our organization today, which is the Lonsdale Elementary School Environmental Camp and TVUUC, will split any offerings that come in that are not labeled as a pledge. The ways you can give are to go to tvuuc.org slash give, or you can text give by going to 73256, type in TVUUC, and then the amount that you would like to give. Once again, thanks for joining us today. Have a great Sunday. Imagine what tomorrow would bring. 
Wednesday evening, I got the news. I couldn't believe it. Didn't want to believe it. Elandria. I thought about how we had spoken last month when I asked E to introduce the offering at my ordination. I told Elandria I was considering splitting the fund between the Living Tradition Fund and Black Lives of UU or Blue. Can I make a suggestion? E said. Sure, I'd love that, I replied. Can I suggest you split the fund three ways and include DRUM, Diverse and Revolutionary UU Multicultural Ministries? E went on to explain that DRUM was an organization for Black Unitarian Universalists long before Blue was founded, and a lot of people didn't know about the history and the relationship between these organizations. But that was Elandria. From what I know and what I hear from others, Elandria brought people together, thought about all who were not at the table, and was the keeper of so much history and knowledge. I am so grateful. Grateful for the ways that Elandria mentored me and encouraged me to grow in Unitarian Universalism when I was a youth. One of the last times I heard from Elandria was a Facebook Live post that he did. And Elandria said, Today I'm going to talk about taking care of self and what it means to sit with self long enough to actually pay attention to what is going on. I heard from E a call to be in a different way, to simultaneously hold the dire need for action, for organizing and activism, with the equally important need to be with one another in care slowing down enough to metabolize grief, to build, in Elandria's words, spaces of restoration. We are worthy enough, he reminds us, to be restored and well. We are worthy enough to be restored and well. Yes. This is Unitarian Universalist theology. Yes. I've been thinking about how we might actually do that, to build these spaces of restoration. And what comes to me is that we need to listen. Listen to Elandria. Listen in our communities. Listen within ourselves. I don't know about you, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had a hard time listening lately. It's hard to focus right now. I've been sleeping poorly. I've been working harder than ever. Long, long days and pushing through exhaustion. Are you too feeling weary and worried? How do you listen to that? Listen to what you're feeling. What you're experiencing right now. Aren't you worthy enough to be listened to? One practice that we've been engaging with lately in my church community is grounding through the senses. We can bring our awareness to our perceptive faculties as a starting point, a touchstone to what is happening right here, right now. If at any time this practice becomes too much, know that you can disengage and focus on something else. Take care of yourself. I'm going to share a song that came to me, a song that invites us to ground through the senses. As each sense is described, try being with your own bodily sensations. This is a practice of restoration.
What do you see? What do you see? Take a look around and what do you see? Shapes and colors, shadow and light, everything that lies within your sight. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Whoa, whoa. See life now, oh, 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 see life now. What do you hear? What do you hear? All those sounds are moving through the air. Song and laughter, hopes and fears, everything that meets within your ear. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Oh, oh, oh. hear life now. Oh, oh, oh. hear life now. What do you touch? What do you touch? Try to settle down and what do you touch? Earth beneath you blowing wind Everything that comes upon your skin Life is calling now Swirling round, rooting down Life is calling now Inside out, sky and ground Oh, oh, oh life now oh, oh, oh. feel life now what do you taste what do you taste focus inside and oh, what do you taste fruits and veggies egg foo young everything that comes to touch your tongue life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Oh, oh, oh. taste life now. Oh, oh, oh. taste life now. What do you smell? What do you smell? Breathe in, breathe out. And what do you smell? Baking cookies, blooming rose, everything that moves to greet your nose. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Oh, oh, oh. Breathe life now, oh, oh, oh. sense life now. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now inside out, sky and ground. Earlier we heard a story about a boy named Nikolai who sought answers to these three questions. When is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is the right thing to do? And Nikolai without realizing it, lived the answers to these questions. That there is only one important time, and that time is now. The most important one is always the one you are with, and the most important thing is to do good for the one or the ones who are right there with you. Easy to say, yet hard to put into practice. In order to even be in the present moment, in order to even perceive who is right here with us, we must be extremely attentive. 
And I'm talking about those people and those beings on the margins, those who are often overlooked, demonized, dehumanized. I'm talking about the migrant laborers that are right there with us every time we eat, the incarcerated population who's right there with us as we live and benefit from this economic system, and the more than human world, the ecosystems that enable us to take each breath and yet are so often harmed by our lives. Every day I know there are thousands of demands and thoughts just taking me away from being right here. There are a million reasons to focus on something other than the present moment, which can be so painful. On Thursday, I had a meeting in the Colorado mountains. This meeting was a chance for me to be restored and to be well, connecting with dear friends and colleagues safely and outdoors. I thought hard about canceling. This week has had so many demands. We've been working to put our house on the market. I need to finish up work on several worship services. I have committee responsibilities. I have to write this sermon. I just can't. I can't. I must. I must go. I just knew I must. And the time was beautiful. Connective, restorative. I have no regrets. And after our meeting, I took a walk alone, grounding in my senses. I saw the sunlight moving through the dancing aspen leaves. I heard the wind playing through those leaves and the birds singing nearby. I felt the warmth of the sun, the cool breeze, the feeling of my feet on the ground, the rustling of the grass as I passed. I smelled the butterscotch vanilla scent of ponderosa pine. I tasted the water from my bottle, slightly sweet and refreshing. It was time for me to drum. My seminary friend Daryl Walker told me that in the black church tradition, some folks call this walking them home. Walking them home. This prayer and song after someone has died. For me, I drum and I pray that the sound and the intention may serve as a guide for a soul's passage from body to the great mystery beyond. I drum now for Alandria. A few months ago at General Assembly, Alandria poured libations for many who had died in the past year connected to Unitarian Universalism. My mother-in-law, Myrna, was on that list. And so, bringing spirits up with me to the mountains, I poured libations for E. Do not try to save the whole world, Martha Postlethwaite writes, or to do anything grandiose. Instead, create a clearing in the dense forest of your life and wait there patiently until the song that is yours alone to sing falls into your open cupped hands and you recognize it and greet it. Only then will you know how to give yourself to this world so worthy of rescue. Grief has a way of clearing the dense forest of our lives. Grief has a way of demanding our listening. We must listen. Elandria's song is ringing out, echoing and reverberating across mountains and plains. And I am listening even more intently for my own song. Seeking to harmonize with folks like E, 
who give themselves fully to this world every day. Will you join me in this listening? Amen and blessed be. our closing words for today. As We Go Forward by Cheryl Block. As we go forward into this frightening, exhilarating, confusing, miraculous world, may we offer our comfort to the afflicted, our love to those who are lonely, and our wish for all to be safe. As you log off your computer and go out to enjoy a beautiful day, I invite you to think of your friends and to reach out this week through an email, a phone call, a text message, 
or some other way, just because we are separated by a pandemic doesn't mean we can't stay connected as a community. Go in peace. There's a truth beyond our knowledge. There's compassion beyond our pain. There's a future burning brighter. There's a love to guide our There's a truth beyond our knowledge.